Hi, my name's Samuel William. I live in London, in the United Kingdom, and I host a regular radio show on YouTube called Truth You Can Wake Up To. I, like many others in this country, have come to a decision, and that is to stop funding the BBC. That means no longer paying the TV licence. Now I say lots of other people, well, who are they? Are they militant fundamentalists? Hell-bent on disrupting the country? No. Do they have a criminal mentality? No. These are ordinary people. Teachers, nurses, office workers, parents, grandparents, students, and even media professionals. I mean, we have an aggressive culture. You two work for the BBC. I worked for the BBC for 30 years. When I was at the BBC, it promoted the licence fee by saying how wonderful it was. But now, the organisation you work for says, we know where you are. Aunties put boxing gloves on, and I was so incensed by the idea that I'm guilty of something that I actually cancelled my TV licence fee a few months ago. Because yeah. I'm not going to have the BBC or any organisation threatening me. So are the BBC really threatening people? Well, let's take a look at one of their nationwide broadcasts. Well, I think you'll agree that that advert would not look out of place if it was playing on a telly screen in the background of the film 1984. The voiceover is modulated as if it's coming from a machine. So this is warning us of the ever presence of surveillance technology. And if the system they have is so flawless, then this advert can only operate as a threat. Of course, this isn't the only threatening techniques they use. Let's have a look at what they send through the door. So first, you'll receive the blue one. The writing's quite friendly. Hi, I'm writing to let you know your TV licence is due to expire on the above date, and I want to tell you how quick and easy we've made it to renew your licence. And direct debit is very simple, and uh, no hassle whatsoever saves you time. And remember, you must have a valid TV license to receive or record any TV program service. So why not sort it out today? It's one less thing to worry about. Well, do we have anything to worry about? Or maybe we should worry about the orange one that turns up next. Now the language is a little bit more serious. You need to pay immediately. Our records show you have not renewed your TV license. If you use television receiving equipment, you are breaking the law and you are risking prosecution and a fine of up to £1,000. So in the same letter, they say you do need to pay, but they also say if you have a television, you'll be breaking the law. So this letter is nicely informing us they don't actually know if we have a television or not. Now come the big guns. You are hereby given notice. This property is currently under investigation. If you are continuing to watch or record television programmes without a licence at this property, it is my duty to inform you that you are breaking the law. You are risking criminal prosecution and you could face a fine of up to £1,000. Your case has been referred to our investigations unit.
there could be a number of like different replies, couldn't there? I mean, I need time to think one up. Huh? We know you've got one. We detected it. Oh. <laughs> So let's first consider the spectre of the TV detector van. Now these vans are shrouded in mystery. The BBC will not release any information about the technology that is used. And in 2006, a freedom of information request was made to the BBC asking, have the TV detection vans ever been used for evidence to prosecute anyone. The reply came back, no. TV detector evidence has never been used in court. Another Freedom of Information request went in in 2009. This question was, do the detector vans actually exist? And how many detector vans do TV licensing use? The BBC responded by saying, yes, the detector vans exist, but then refused to divulge how many there were. Now after this, a complaint was put to the Commissioner about the BBC's reluctance to divulge information, and this response was received. The Commissioner recognises the importance the BBC places on the public perception of the use of detector vans and he also recognises that disclosure of this information would change this perception. The BBC in 2010 actually stated themselves that the public perception of detector vans has always been a very cost-effective way of enforcing the TV licence. The public perception is cost-effective because they don't have to spend money on the real things. You can, however, expect a visit from the TV licensing enforcement team. Now, contrary to popular opinion, the BBC is not a publicly owned nationalised asset company. You can, in fact, go on any company's house website and you'll find the BBC listed as private limited with share capital, meaning they make profit for their shareholders. So in that they are a privately owned corporation, what authority do the TV licensing enforcement team have over you? The answer? Well, none, actually. The only role they have to fulfill is to get your name. And that's because as a privately owned corporation, the BBC are trying to make a contract with you. They need your name address and they need your signature. Without any of those they cannot have a legal contract. Now I'm sure you've heard the words you have the right to remain silent. It's something that the police will say to you if they go to arrest you. Now do they give you that right by informing you of it? No. Of course we always have the right to remain silent and your right to remain silent essentially means you have the right to abstain from entering into any contract if you wish to. But of course the enforcement team from TV licensing don't really care about your rights. They just want your name. So hold on Here we go. Well, the reason why I'm asking is that I'm calling for TV licenses. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you have a TV license at an earlier address? Am I obliged to talk to you? Only if you want to, sir. I have no need for a television license. Why is that? I have no need for a television license. Do you have no TV? I'm not obliged to speak to you. Okay, well, let's give your name and telephone number and get somebody from the office to speak to you. Am I obliged to do that? Only if you want to, sir. No, thank you. Okay, thanks for your help. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Alright, okay. Yeah, I'm just making an inquiry here, you see? 
Okay, why, why don't you mind being filmed? Um, well, okay, you can come away. I'll never play cops up on the TV licensing. Okay. Okay. I'm Thank just you. making an inquiry here. Okay. I appear to have a TV license set up. I wonder if you could tell me what the situation is, please. Uh, I don't wish to divulge any information to you at right this moment. Alright, thank you. Thank Bye you very bye. much. Bye bye. Of course, one option would be to not open the door at all. But who wants to live in fear? The best thing would be to open the door and just politely inform them that you do not need their services. Now, are we getting away with something by doing this, by evading the TV licensing? Well, no. As I hope I've demonstrated in this film, it's my belief that the BBC are guilty of certain crimes. Mostly fraud by misrepresentation. They essentially lie and then gain a profit from that lie. I believe they are guilty of harassment and certainly display threatening behavior. It is also a crime to fund a criminal organization. So by withholding funds, we are protecting ourselves. But if the worst were to happen, and you happen to find yourself in court, what defence could you possibly have? Well, any case against you would be instantly thrown out once you point out what it says in our Bill of Rights from 1689, which is possibly the most powerful law in the country. It says that all grants and promises of fines of particular persons before conviction are illegal and void. That means if you've been threatened with a fine before it has been ascertained if you are guilty or innocent, then that fine does not and cannot apply. So if the worst penalty for not paying your TV license is a £1,000 fine, and that fine can never be enforced because it was promised under illegal circumstances, then there can really only be one question. When are you going to assert your freedom?